Hello and welcome. This is NT Tuesday Live and I'm Cyril Stober. Now, agriculture and food security are two sides of a coin that can be affected by climate change. Climate change has a lot of implications on food security in Nigeria as the adverse effect of drought, desertification and flooding do lead to low or poor agricultural produce. There is some apprehension, particularly with the Nigerian Meteorological Agency's 2017 seasonal rainfall that shows that the current flooding situation in many parts of the country can lead to poor crop production and harvest this year. Now more worrisome are warnings that the recent trend in climate would result in tremendous alteration in the rainfall pattern in the country. Now this, many believe, is not good for agriculture as only a few crops could tolerate excess amount of water, while those crops that can survive the flood may be caught up by the dry spell. It is widely held that understanding farmers' responses to climate variation is crucial. Now, how true is this? How much of assistance do farmers get, especially in terms of zero interest or low interest credit facilities or even insurance? Now, how best can farmers gain from climate change? These are some of the issues we'll be tackling tonight on NTA Tuesday Live. But first, let's get to see this report by Musa Baba Aliu. Nigeria is estimated to be populated with over 60 million farmers, producing well over 70 percent of the food consumed by over 170 million Nigerians daily from the small expanse of land cultivated. 90% of these farmers reside in rural areas and rely on the traditional farming techniques for all year farming season. Soil degradation, erosion, drought and flooding remain their major challenges. Investigations show that the low yield per hectare recorded by farmers is as a result of the environmental factors occasioned by global warming. The 2015-2016 rainy season was favorable to farmers that resulted to significant increase in food production. But this year's rainy season is coming with a difference in spite of the fact that it came as expected, but flooding remains a threat to the farmers. It first challenges to us because you harvest, maybe the buyer is even on the way coming, the rain started falling. And most of these off takers prefer a dry something. So I saw it, you say, okay, your rice is wet, we are, unless you are selling it on social price. And rice have something, after, when it is in wet condition, after 24 hours, it started germinating. So you see the waste has come. Farmers, with the support of the federal government and other international agencies, have developed methods to protect farms against flooding. For instance, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture has developed a mobile phone application to alert farmers on rain pattern. What this app does is to provide that early warning opportunity to be able to take necessary remedial measures to ensure that lives are protected, agricultural production is guaranteed. The Nigeria Meteorological Agency and the Hydrological Services Agency predict that 21 states may experience flooding. Agriculturists caution farmers on planting in flood-prone areas. The had predicted early onset and early cessation of the 2017 rainfall and advised users on the best way to factor the information in planning activities in all rainfall-sensitive sectors of the economy. You now see that the quantum of water on the surface of Nigeria is so much, and that is why everything must be done to harness this water and also allow the water to flow down the major channels and tributaries. In Abuja, Musa Baba Ali, NTA News. All right, that report sets the background. It sets the tone for tonight's discussion. Let's start off by introducing our guest. We'd like to welcome to this program Aziz Muiwa Musbao, who is Director of Agri-Business Processing and Marketing in the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We're also joined tonight by Dr. Philip Olushek Mujo, Director General, National Agricultural Seeds Council. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Okay. Let me also welcome to this program uh, Dr. Gabriel Okenwa, Executive Director of Partnership Strategy and Corporate Services of the Bank of Agriculture. Thanks for being here. Thank you, sir. 
We're also joined tonight by Professor Hilary Inyang, concurrent professor, Nanjing University, China, and President, Global Education and Infrastructure Service, Concord, North Carolina in the USA. It's good to have you join us. Thank you. And good evening, viewers. And let's also welcome Kabiru Ibrahim, President, All Farmers Association of Nigeria. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Thank you for having me. Right. Let's acquaint you with the procedures we always do every Tuesday. At the appropriate time, you can get to join the discussion in the studio. The various platforms will be on your screens. We advise you to take advantage of them. However, for those who will be calling in, we say this all the time. Do us a favor. When your call gets through, turn down the volume of your TV set. Just reduce the volume. That's the way to avoid a hurlback or an echo. And the best way to know your call has been passed through is you'll see your name on screen. Once your name appears on screen, it means your call has been passed through to the studio. You just go ahead with a question or comment. Don't bother too much about the greetings. Just go straight to the point. Keep it short, and so other people can get on the platform. So once again, welcome to NTA Tuesday Live. Let's begin by asking the question that's on the lips of almost every Nigerian today. Do we have enough food in the country? And uh, what is the level of our food security? Let's start. With yeah, you. thank you very much, Siri. This is a very good question, and I'm sure most people will be asking this question to know whether Nigeria is food secure. But first, what is food security? We have several definitions of food security, but I would like to make use of a Kenya definition, which states that food security is ensuring sustainable access, affordability, availability to good quality food at the right quality and the right quantity in order to satisfy the physiological needs of human beings. In Nigeria today, I want to assure Nigerians that by the FAO standard, awarding certificate to Nigeria for achieving MDG1, which is reducing the number of people going to sleep hungry. I think we can stay, we can say with some level of confidence that we are working towards full security. All right. So, we're working towards it. Food security. It's not exactly the same thing as saying we're food secure, right? <laughs> Just working towards it. Yeah. We have achieved Millennium Go One, which okay. means right. that we have substantially okay. reduced the number of people. Fine. So many, so, many more Nigerians can rest assured that um, there's food in the country. There is food in the country. Okay. There are other aspects but the from your other definition. aspect is when you are talking about the availability, availability yes, affordability. It. Because it's all part of uh, the definition you gave, the, the availability Affo and the affordability. affordability. That could be a different kettle of fish altogether. Yes. But uh, let's come to Dr. Philip Olusek Mujo, who's the Director General of the National Agricultural Seeds Council. Now, food security is tied to seed security as well. Yeah. Now, People ask, are we safe? Because the imagined trends now in, in you know in improved seeds are that these seeds cannot be replanted. I mean, you have them from one source only. Um, a lot of people have talked about that that um, it's been done in such a way that you will continue to depend on a particular source for your improved seeds. Is this true? Uh, thank you very much. Uh <coughs> Seed security is actually a precursor of food security. Yeah. Uh, depending on a particular source of uh, its particular source of seed, is not definitely true, except when you are talking of hybrid. Yeah. But we have open pollinated uh, crops that don't you don't have to depend on a particular source over a period of time. You can make use of open pollinated for about two or three years before going back to the source. But when we're talking about hybrid, you have to go back to the source every year. So that is the situation. Is this something to worry about or nothing to worry about? That's nothing to worry about. That's nothing to worry about at all. Because let me put it on record. 
The Nigerian produces about 65 percent of the seed being used in West Africa. Okay. You know, that is actually a level of confidence. And other states in West Africa are looking towards Nigeria for seeds. So that's an indication that we we are relatively okay. Going by the definition of um, food security, which we just listened to, yeah. um, there are two aspects here, affordability and availability. I suppose we could relate the issue of seeds to affordability and availability as well. Uh, availability, uh, yes. Uh, affordability uh, to some extent. Availability because uh, we have about 157 seed companies in Nigeria today. Mm -hmm. uh, about 100 seed companies uh, actually uh, came to us for accreditation. Also, under the GS, a lot of agri-leaders were developed in all the nodes and crannies of this country. And they have what we can call a one-stock shop where they have fertilizers and seeds that are actually being uh, sold. And uh, they is actually a way of actually making seeds very close to the rural farmer. So to a reasonable extent, availability. Then affordability, well, it's actually relative. Yeah, well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll come to that. Okay, well, Dr. Gabriel, okay, well. Uh, Partnership strategy, corporate services, the Bank of Agriculture. It's something that uh, uh, Kabiri Ibrahim would be very interested in here. But uh, let's set the tone first by asking you what kind of partnership services you can provide. As to key into this moving towards food security, as uh, the director here said, that we're working on it, we're working towards it. A lot can be said, truly. But like um, it's been defined, but let it put on put it on the um, self complex as um, was declared in 1996 in Rome by the World uh, Food Summit. Yeah. That food security exists only when people all people and at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food to meet their dietary needs and of course food preferences for an active and healthy life. Mm -hmm. Along this line, when you talk of partnerships to achieving this, the Bank of Agriculture has done quite a lot since we came on board to partner with various stakeholders. And I want to put it on good note that food security is achievable if all hands are on deck. Nigerians are very, very wonderful and enterprising, very entrepreneurial people. Mm. There's no doubt about it. We we'll partner with the farmers, do all that we can do to support them, the best definitely will come along this line. All right. So, okay, let's uh, shift a little bit as we go to uh, Professor Inyan in final. We have heard from the first three speakers that, yes, we are on the right path moving towards achieving that. But yes, we must look at the other side of the coin. Those issues that can stultify growth or affect the achievement of these goals that are set out for food security. The uh, first one is climate change. Hmm. Climate change constitutes perhaps the greatest threat to the attainment of uh, food security 
uh, why Nigeria? Uh, these are the reasons. Obviously, if uh, the public has listened to the definition of food security, mm. but that has a time component as well. So things that can happen to derail that effort uh, are tied intricately to the ecological changes in Nigeria. You already know, you already know, that the desertification front is moving south at the rate of 1.5 kilometers per year. What that does is diminish the size of arable land in Nigeria. And you know that Nigeria's land mass, at least the zones that can be irrigated or farmed, uh, the, those zones are not necessarily going to increase in size. Nigeria has a finite land area, but its population is increasing. And over the next 15 to 20 years, it will become one of the most populous countries in Nigeria. Now, if uh, the ravages of climate change, flooding, uh, even in the north, and uh, coastal erosion, and uh, ecological changes such as displacement of pests to areas that they were never found before diminishes that. So you will have reduction in the potential to attain that f food security for all times. And there are many other attendant problems, like the headsman problem, mm. uh, which essentially arises also because of diminishing in the size of arable land. It's thought that some of these are things you can't really do anything about. And uh, how much of it can you just attribute to nature? And how much, of, how, how, how much control or how much can you, to what extent can you manipulate some of the natural causes as to turn them into advantage? Uh, excellent question. You know that um, uh, generally you have the stressors. So those stressors are those hazards that are tied to climate change. Uh, there are two ways of dealing with this. We can look at the long-term uh, mitigation techniques, which is what the international community wants Nigeria to do. But essentially, in a country like Nigeria, we have to deal with the issue adaptation is a better approach. So you know that the rainfall season is getting constricted. What you've been f finding out is not really that there is a large increase or expansion of the size of the rainy season. No, the rainy season, the duration stays almost the same. It's just that you have more intense rainfall within that time period. This is the problem. That's why you have the flooding. What can Nigeria do? Uh, obviously, there are mitigative techniques and the adaptation techniques. Uh, Farmers have to be advised more on when they have to plant. You have many Nigerian agencies that are deep in meteorology, and they've been doing a good job. But what remains now is to get that information to diffuse to farmers in rural areas where they need that information. There are certain seeds that are more resistant to floods, to water. So it changes like that. And um, also monitoring, for example. If the public knows, or farmers know, that uh, certain parts of the uh, country are prone to flooding, they can adapt. There are maps, geomorphic maps, that point to zonation of flooding potential. And those can be avoided, just like you have with structures, with zoning, okay, codes and standards. You can also have that for farming. All right, let's now come to a man in the middle of it all, and uh, I suppose uh, the bulk of what we're talking about rests with him, because uh, this is a man hands-on, uh, president of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria. We'll let you ha have the benefit of listening to everyone. <laughs> now let's hear your perspective. Well, uh, there is a lot of hope, you know, all the speakers have... Uh, attested to the fact that some effort is being made so that we have food security. And of course there are problems. These are Some of them are natural. Some of them are as a result of commission or omission on the part of every Nigerian. 
Well, I tend to look at food security globally, not just Nigeria, because uh, we are the food basket of some of our neighbors. If we do not produce sufficient food to secure our place by also helping to secure other places that mm -hmm. traditionally we have been doing, we are not food secured. We will not be food secured. So as far as uh, all these, uh, whatever everybody it's has said is concerned, it only gives the farmer hope uh, in the interim. Uh, finally, I think we, all of the sectors, all of the people who spoke have a role to play and they, they need to be more decisive, you know, in terms of dissemination, this information to mm. the farmer and implementing some of the policies and some of the things that are currently being done. We welcome what is happening today because there are more farmers now in Nigeria. This is the ceiling availability of food that we, we have because of the attraction of agriculture to every Nigerian today. Because as a matter of course, because oil is becoming a problem, the, no, we don't get any good revenue from it. Uh, we must feed ourselves, therefore we must uh, produce our own food. So a lot more, the aggregate of uh, farmers and people who are even in government taking into farming and all that is helping us to be able to feed, to be food sufficient in Nigeria and even be able to export it to gain foreign exchange. So to that extent, I think we are in good stead. Nigeria is in good stead. But uh, some of these problems, some of these mitigations, or mitigative efforts against uh, uh, climate change and all that, we will have to do decisively. Uh, and the, for us to see it, for instance, we cannot be uh, seed secure if we don't have the right kind of seed that is uh, that improves our yield, that is not uh, diluted or adulterated by people who are quacky in producing it. So, so that's a point to, to really uh, hold on to, the availability of seeds. And, and this is where uh, your association becomes key. What is the approach? Tell us what, what's been, what's been, what it's been like. There is a good effort, you know, from the Seed Council. We've interacted with the Seed Council. We, we are partnering with them. We are every day talking with them. Uh, you know, when I met, he's, a, he's, a, he's the most familiar of all the people here. <laughs> I, I see him every day. I speak with him. Uh, I traveled with him even abroad. We, he is, uh, and he has made us to also accept biotechnology. You know, see how we can uh, genetically improve even our seeds, be able to uh, be f uh, food secure. You know, in, if we increase our yield, so they they are doing a lot of things there. Even though they are a bit silent. They, they don't make as much noise as we probably make, but uh, the, uh, the seed council is doing a lot of work, and uh, they are controlling the people who bastardize the production of, uh, of seed. Now, now that you mention it, do you face any form of skepticism about employing genetic, genetically modified you know, seeds for? This practice no. because it's been for a while it was a controversial no, no, subject but there really. is good uh, good science that supports genetically modified food. there is no no science no proof that th this this process or whatever happens affect the human being you know there is no science that shows it so as far as the farmers are concerned, we embrace it to take us out of poverty in the first Let place. me give you an example. There's a particular, well, without mentioning uh, names directly, there's a particular seedling which um, we've seen the yield. It's talking about mangoes, for instance. And, uh, you know, they, uh, a lot of us who grew up, you know, back then when you could just have uh, eat a mango and just toss the core anywhere and you know by by the next year it's uh, germinated and all that we're used to the normal mango seeds nowadays you open up a mango and you find a I don't want to use the word strange kind of seed <laughs> which cannot be planted a number of people are not too comfortable with that one uh 
I am a product of the exact science. <laughs> they, yeah. they, it will be wrong for me to say that there is some evidence that this is harmful. Okay. You know, because it's not proven. All right. But to tell you the truth, the fruits you are talking about has more flesh yes. and therefore is more likely to fill your belly okay. than the other one that you used to throw away, you know. And uh, because it's got a very large uh, seedling in it, you, you don't even eat much, and it even litters the place. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I, I wonder why you didn't talk of uh, uh, grapes. There are some seedless grapes. Yeah, you you those eat two. them and there's nothing inside. Those you two. have nothing to throw away. And they are, oranges they are, as well. They, they there are, are oranges the as well of, with uh, little or no peeps in they them. They are the darling of people who like grapes. <laughs> so I wonder what is happening to mango. Uh, you, if you, well, this is your experience. Mm. But I, I will encourage my farmers to all plant right. that kind of mango. That's the thing because uh, it all goes back to the farmers. Uh, yeah. uh, if it's an acceptable, I mean, if it's acceptable to them, and uh, that perhaps would be where you come in here. But let, let's come back to <laughs> to you. And uh, in all of this, people have talked about uh, policies and uh, the direction in which we're going. Are we still pursuing those policies? And some, some Nigerians worry about inconsistencies. How consistent have we been in the last, let's say, four years? Yeah, thank you very much. And I would like to commend the current administration. I want to commend Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I also want to commend the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Chief Aldo Obe. I have been in the ministry for the past 31 years, and I've had the opportunity of following, tracking the government policy. Let me say here that we are pursuing the stable policy in the past uh, four years. We are lucky to have a man who is passionate about agriculture. We are lucky to have a man who is conscious and concerned about agriculture. And this is explained why we are still implementing the National Agricultural Resilience Policy, which is aiming at addressing some of the challenges of the climate change. First, let me define uh, 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 and, uh, uh, what we are currently working on. If you look at the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, it has five main implementing priorities. Mm -hmm. Number one is stabilizing the macro uh, economic environment. Number two is food security and agriculture. Number three is improving the transport infrastructure. I wouldn't want to waste our time by mentioning the remaining three. But I want to emphasize on the first major, uh, on the first two, which is stabilizing the macroeconomic environment, under which the current administration is currently promoting the diversification of the Nigerian economy. We are currently supporting massive production of food by providing the necessary inputs to the farmers, making sure they have access to these inputs. We are also continuing the implementation of GES, which is the e-wallet method of getting the inputs to the farmers. This has been a very consistent uh, policy. The current administration has also established the presidential initiative on fertilizer, which is bringing down the cost of the production of fertilizer, thereby transferring the subsidy directly to the farmers, ensuring that no body is selling fertilizer or the nose and crannies of the country more than. Specifically, let me, tell, let me mention about the seed, because I feel this is an area. Mm -hmm. Government has worked by supporting the Agricultural Research Institute to develop low, I mean, to develop high yielding, short duration, improved varieties of crops. Let me mention, for example, cocoa. The cocoa we are used to 
they are missing. The amelorando takes not less than six years to fruit and is producing <coughs> as low as 0.5 kg per hectare. Mm -hmm. But with the development, with the support of the government to the research institute, Coco Research Institute has come up with a good varieties of cocoa seedling, of cocoa pod, otherwise known as clean TC1, TC2, TC2, up to TC8. It, it is early maturing. It matures within 24 months, two years. It's high yielding, producing about 2.5 metric tons. It has superior cocoa flavor, can be used for chocolate. It has high butter content, about 58%, whereas the older one has 30, less than 30%. Agreed, climate change is real. It's one of the topical and tropical issues facing the recent, uh, uh, in the, I mean, didn't address in the recent time. This has explained why we have several literature on the climate change. Okay. In fact, it has been defined as the greatest significant environmental threat in the 21st century, but we are addressing it along okay. through the implementation of national agricultural resilience policy, which has been approved, which is a policy approved, and we are still implementing. Oral minister is committed to full implementation of this policy without huh? changing it. Thank All you right, good, good. Okay, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll explore the aspects of it, but uh, staying with the issue of seeds. Yes. Acceptability. That's what I want uh, Dr. Ulusheng Ujo to speak about, the acceptability. There are, uh, uh, are there credible reports? Are those reports credible that uh, sometimes these seeds, um, they end up under the beds of um, farmers instead of where they should be? But what's the level of acceptability? Let's start from that premise. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I want to state that the seeds available are actually acceptable to our farmers. Well, you cannot run away from some people, very few people probably consuming some of the seed, but uh, uh, generally the seeds that are available are acceptable, particularly some of the seeds that are actually from research institutes. And uh, we are talking about uh, climate change again. You discover that Research institutes have all come out with very, very good materials that are climate smart seeds. Rice, for example, we have flood tolerance rice now, developed from Erie, which are actually acceptable and adaptable here. Also, there are very good uh, materials, climate smart materials for maize. Some of the early maturing mat uh, varieties, they are actually there. Uh, some as 45 is one of them, which is me medium uh, maturing. So they are actually acceptable and uh, available, particularly with good agricultural practices. Our farmers are uh, making waves. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll return to you in a moment, but um, our phone lines are open. We have Abu Bakar calling in from Abuja. Hello, Abu Bakar. Go ahead. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, how are you? Good evening. Uh, good evening. Yes, I can go ahead. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Just go right ahead with a question or comment. Uh, it is a good thing that we are discussing food uh, security and agricultural development. So it's asking for the topic. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing that. Yes, Abu Bakr. Are you with us? Or, per or perhaps we'll just let you keep watching and uh, you'll get you. Yes. Okay. Perhaps we'll just let you keep watching and then uh, you can call back. Uh, it'd be at that time, we hope uh, you would have. Um, familiarize yourself with um, the issues at stake here. But let's return to uh, uh, Dr. Ulrich Phillips to 
speak more, uh, Ujo, to speak more on the question of uh, the seeds. Uh, you were just telling us about how acceptable those seeds are. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. I said uh, these seeds are actually acceptable, and uh, in situations where there are problems, and problems are reported to us, uh, stringent measures are actually taken to actually uh, ensure that people who cut corners are actually disciplined. Mm. Particularly now in the uh, CDAT, CDAT number 72 of 1992, which is being amended, there are penalties for anybody that actually cut corners. First offenders will have to pay a fine of one million naira, or go to jail for six months, or both. So the same thing with second offenders. So the trees are available, and whenever we discover that people are cutting corners, and we have information, we apply such things immediately. Even as I'm speaking with you, uh, a lot of agorillas, particularly some agorillas in Kano and Zaria, that we are actually uh, found to have compromised by printing labels and seed mm. containers of seed companies are prosecuted. So I don't have problem of uh, acceptability of okay. the seed of seed companies. Because you know, the farmers are king, particularly if a seed company is not doing well, they are very rational human beings. They will go to the best seed companies that's available and they have the leverage. Unfortunately, we have 157 of them on, on ground and a lot of other people are actually coming on board for accreditation. So there's a lot to choose from. Yes. Mm. Okay. Well, back to the phones. Uh, okay. Well, we would uh, would keep those calls coming through as we go ahead. Um, but then again, let's come back to the question of funding. We started talking about partnerships. Yes, you provide those partnerships. Key to those partnerships, I suppose, would be funding. And uh, we still hear Nigerian farmers wail about access to credit. Thank you. Um, actually, the bank is being restructured to respond to the credit challenges of the Nigerian agriculture. There's no doubt about it. Um, we are dealing with these um, issues. Um, the issue of exorbitant rates um, are being dealt with. Um, as um, we want to get to the farmers and uh, ensure that um, we work with them, um, we, like somebody stated here, something needs to happen for another thing to, mm -hmm. you know, happen, truly. Um, the director mentioned what uh, is being done by the Federal Minister of Agriculture. I will say it without mincing words, that um, the Honorable Minister, uh, Chief Aoudoube, has done wonderfully well um, with his um, great team. The Honorable Minister of State, the PAMSAC, all the directors there. And um, along these lines, they are working to ensure that farmers get working. And for us, as an institution, we definitely have gotten strategies that we need to deploy okay. as to All right. um, help the, okay. the, the In a moment or so, we'll be asking you to tell us about those strategies. Let's try and get this call from Abode, who's calling in from Abuja. Bode, if you're on the line, go ahead. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, one thing I want to comment on or contribute on is in respect of storage of our agricultural products. Storage facility needs to be in place so that by the time of scarcity, we can resort to this you know, to the foods that are stored. Like, now, yam is a problem in Abuja, and possibly in other parts of the, of Nigeria. But if we have places where they are stored, there will be availability every time. 
Secondly, why can't we resort to the question of something like Oko Board, Granot Board, and all the boards that were established in the past that made it easier for the farmers, you know, it gives confidence to them to produce because this thing will be bought. It will encourage many people to produce. Board, let them discuss the question of board, all these board, cocoa board, cocoa, I mean, all these farmer board and granite board. Very important. So the question of board being established by government for the government to control it, that we give confidence to farmers to produce in large quantity because they know quite when this thing will be purchased. Then the question of storage. Thank you very much. I like your contribution. I be educated. I'm in support of it. And I like to be a farmer. Thank right. you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Bodhi. Um, yeah. Two key issues is raised here. Yeah. He suggested returning to the commodity boards of old and his risk issues about storage so yeah thank you very much uh, body and i will quickly and sharply address this first on the issue of storage let me explain that uh, according to the fao of the united Nations, a country is expected to have three levels of storage systems i mean the home farm which is being handled by the farmer the buffer salt which will be handled by the state governments and the strategic food reserve, which should be handled by the federal government. Currently, Nigeria is having the capacity of 1.3 million metric tons of storage capacity with silos built all over the uh, country. Government is currently uh, uh, government is currently trying to find a way of leasing out this silo. This is on in order to ensure that the private sector, that they will have access to this uh, silo. You are right. If we are having appropriate storage facilities, we will be able to address the current post harvest laws. Let me also agree with you that government is also looking at the possibility of not bringing the whole commodity corporation back, but uh, the whole commodity board back, but having a privately run, privately managed commodity corporation. This has been addressed, and the Honorable Minister has made it clear that in the, uh, within a short period, Nigeria will be called upon to make contributions on the, on, on the commodity corporations. I want to quickly say that the current administration is also trying to ensure that the commodity exchange, that the Nigerian commodity exchange is active. As this has been es uh, explained by the current uh, directive and the current directive that the uh, uh, Nigerian sovereign wealth uh, uh, fund trying to invest in the commodity exchange and commodity warehousing. Okay, we will ask the opinions of the other members of this panel on, on those two issues, but let's go back to the phones. We have um, Chidi, who's calling in from Abuja. Hello, Chidi. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, go ahead, Chidi, you're on. Hello, sir. <laughs> we can hear you, go ahead. I'm still calling from Bari. Exactly, your name is on screen, so go right ahead. Yeah, so what I'm asking is that we are paying for fertilizer. We are applying for fertilizer in the, for ginger farm in Kau. So see now we have not seen the fertilizer. Are they going to supply the fertilizer when we are supposed to have the, the, the ginger? Okay. Straightforward question. Challenges with uh, the supply of fertilizer, says Ginger Farms. And um, extending it further, it's always been an issue 
at the right time that fertilizer gets to the farmers. Uh, that, of course. Yeah, government is addressing this. The agro dealers, you know, gone are those days when government will procure and distribute the fertilizer. Yeah. We no longer do this because doing that is encouraging the rent seekers. I we also want the president of Farmers Association of Nigeria to also address this. But I can assure you that if you approach the right agro dealers, you will get the fertilizer. And also, we are also making fertilizer available to the small scale farmer through the e-wallet, the growth enhancement schemes. But the big farmers like you, you are supposed to go directly to the agro dealer, to the fertilizer company, and get your fertilizer. And I'm sure the farmers will be able to mention with the current presidential initiative of well, fertilizer. The, right. You know, I've always uh, been a proponent of a no government subsidy for fertilizers. Mm -hmm. I said it at the West Africa Fertilizer Forum. I think you were there, Aziz. Yes. The minister also supported this position. And I'm glad to say that the present arrangement, this presidential initiative on fertilizer, is making fertilizer available to people. It, I, it can be better because I want it to be available like Coca-Cola. I should be able to buy fertilizer of whatever type I want from a shop. Just buy it and take it to my farm and use it. The gentleman who called from Kubo, is it? Yes. Is, is uh, complaining about the arrival of fertilizer. Yeah, so it's uh, late arrivals and... Uh, well, look, I, I tend to look at agriculture as a business, not, uh, you know, uh, something that would be put in my mouth. So I, should, I should be able to get out and get what I need. If you have a ginger farm and you require fertilizers, uh, you don't sit there and expect fertilizers to arrive there. You make arrangements to get fertilizer into your ginger farm. I, I, you don't have to do it as an individual. You, you can have it as a group. All the farmers there will come together. You can subsidize transportation because the fertilizers are available and you know where they are. So go and buy and then contribute and make it uh, go to your, to your, to your farm. All right, still government more government issues government. being raised on the phone. Let's go over to Lagos. We have Silvanos calling in from Lagos. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, this is Silvanos. Mm. Hello. Yes, go right ahead. Hello. We can hear you, and your name is on screen, so you have the floor. Yes, I'm... I've been following the contributions and I think they have the right ideas. So they sort to of like them just our the last polar ask for fertilizer. It's just simple. Uh, hello? Yes, go on. Yes. And then the, the same problem we've always encountered here. Yeah? So we will come to ask for fertilizer, they say that fertilizer doesn't come from government, but we always say that the all engineering and institutions responsible always distribute fertilizer to but it's not getting to some part. You know that these things are resistant to some area. If there is the western zone, we don't have such facilities. How come? If I get you correctly, you're raising questions about the distribution of fertilizer again that it's not readily available in certain zones. I, I, I'm not too sure, gentlemen, that that's uh, what he was alluding to. Mm. Uh, well, look, uh, as far as uh, fertilizer is the concerned this year, mm. the, some, of some states, you know, and they have been the culprits, you know, buying fertilizer every year, you know, they always have this entry for fertilizer. This year, I believe, the, some of the governments have even too much. The, you know, they bought from elsewhere, and then the one million metric tons from that is being produced and to be, um, being distributed is coming. So I, I know some states that have, you know, the, traditionally they used to give out like 23,000 metric tons. Today they have over 100, 
thousand metric tons. So they're even asking people, to you know, farmers, farmers, big farmers, to mm. come and buy five tons, six tons, and all that. While you know, in the past, you they would give uh, maybe ten people one bag to share. And today it's available everywhere. So if uh, anybody is experiencing difficulty in getting fertilizer where they live, I think they have to check their efforts, you know, towards getting this and their sources. And then they shouldn't give anybody money who promises. They should see the commodity and buy it. I think that's what we should do. Farmers should do that. How, how much sensitization um, have you carried out from um, at least the platform of the Farmers Association? Uh, well, look, we are present in all the 774 local governments. Whenever we have information at the center, we disseminate. It goes right down. Even like what we are doing now, I have told my members to watch out for mm -hmm. what we have to say in this forum, on this platform. And uh, on Thursday, we will have a neck meeting of AFA. Every, every state chair will come there, and the, the national officers will be there. Whatever we have will be disseminated even to the wards, to the local government. So we, everybody heard about what government is doing about fertilizer. Every farmer anxiously waited for it to come, and they have been taking part of it. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, some, some problems may be here and there. It's just starting. Probably by next farming season, it would improve. And I like, you know, like that, it would keep improving. Of course, we, Nigeria is going to be self-sufficient in okay, a number of years, not today. All right. Um, still on the phone, Lagos is where we go to Abdullahi. He's calling in from Lagos. Hello, Abdullahi. Hello, how are you? Go right ahead. Uh, Yes, I, I want to address one fundamental issue. That is the issue of policy, the issue of thinking. The thinking in our agricultural policy has been elitist. Elitist in design, elitist in conception, and elitist in implementation. We had the chance with the river basin scheme during the Second Republic. They went into mass production as a stake on project. But it was misplaced. Misplaced in teaching and design because the community where most of these things were located, the people did not benefit from the project that they already did. It was either shared by part people or lifted outside the community. If it is in other countries like uh, what they used to have in uh, North Korea under Kill in some, kill in some what had what was called a farm plantation model, which is punky. Every farmer is in that plantation, he, he, he has a residence there, he lives there, and so whatever is produced, it is shared there. It is not something that you carry food and we're taking them to this country. No, we have not eaten enough. And we talk about taking it to other countries. Look at the yams in the market, look at the problem that people don't have protection power to buy. And we talk about uh, 2019, we are, we are going to push this. No, it's a mythic. If we want something that people will be associating, it has to be a massive, not just a government policy, every community. We have 774 local governments. If it is designed on local government platform, then every local government with 10 wards will have a plantation farm in this 10 wards. These 10 wards will have accommodation. The people will leave their local division and stay on the farm and produce and share. When they are eating for two years, then we can begin to save. People have not eaten. And we talk about Senate to our countries. Let us eat enough. Take for instance. The thief man with his yam. The thief man before he says he was eating yam in the morning, Sunday, Sunday yam in the afternoon. They eat heavily. The Lebanon, little men will come and carry to Lagos and other other, other parts of the country. You will see them. They prepare the okra, local soup with fish. Nothing, nothing too expensive. But they are contented. If you pass this uh, team community, you see them sitting by the roadside enjoying because they are eating. Anything quarreling with the team is about land, where they will do their production. But no, we say uh, farmers will go and look for this thing. These farmers, 
respond to that? Is it really elitist? Is it? Is there some basic truth in that? Uh, I would like to comment on that. I, I think that um, uh, he, in his attempt to argue for support mm. for cooperatives, mm. then he crossed over to advocacy of communism, which <laughs> is uh, what I heard him giving the example of North Korea. But we must remember that North Korea, uh, for all its efforts, um, took away freedom from farmers. This is not what Nigeria is trying to do. Nigeria is rather trying to empower farmers to be the best they can be, uh, not to overimpose uh, their methods and so forth. They can recommend teach certain things, but the farmers are taking their initiatives and doing things in all of this. 774 local government. I think it rather remain that way with support for them, uh, give them what they need to raise their production to economy of scale. That's what we are talking about, I, I suppose. And I think that in the evolving economy, uh, my colleague sitting to my right will be one of the most important people because of the transition from the oil and gas economy to agricultural economy. Do you hold that? Do you? Well, look, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I concur with him. Right. Because if you regimentalize yeah. agriculture, I would not be in it. I mean, why? It's, it's a business, and I want to be able to prosper. So how can I do it when I am in a street jacket? The Nigerian economy is mixed. Yes. We, we, we should not look at uh, other nations that have, I think they have put, very low horizons on the individual. Yep. And that Nigeria is open. Let me, you let me quickly, yeah, thank you very much. Let mm -hmm. me quickly contribute to this, and I want to appreciate the concern of the gentleman Abdullah calling from Lagos. Honestly speaking, we need to commend the farmers, and we need to now realize that the time of the farmers, that, that their time has now come. According to the recent statistics of people going on only pilgrimage to Mecca, 75% of those who have paid fully are farmers. So we should not be saying that by the time the farmers are now laughing, they are going to the bank, they are smiling to the bank, that we should prevent them from getting the dividends of their own democracy. So let me be honest with you. You have to, it has to be win-win. Farm, farming is now a business. Agriculture is now a business. So. If my dear brother wants also to go into agriculture, we are exporting yams, we are exporting horses, you'll be welcome and you'll be supported. <laughs> right, Dr. Okewa. <laughs> well, truly, um, when we talk of um, support for agriculture, I want to just uh, draw um, attention to what is actually happening as we speak. Um, Central Bank, um, ably led by the governor of Central Bank, um, uh, Mefele, actually came up with the Anko Borowas program. This is just dedicated for the farmers, especially the peasant farmers. Um, in this program, there is whom they call the anchor. You know, there is um, the input supplier and um, the farmer. Then um, partnering with a bank like ours, Bank of Agriculture provide support to the farmers. And this support is not necessarily all cash. Mm. You know, it's not necessarily cash because you, you are looking at ensuring that the farmers, you know, go to the farm truly 
and you reach the real, real farmers. Let me also go ahead to, uh, you know, put it on, you know, uh, in a clear context. You see, um, for us in Bank of Agriculture, we also have what we call collaboration slash uh, co-funded projects in support of the farmers. Collaboration in the sense that most of the states are really, really working with us to support the farmers. They um, get the farmers organized in cooperative societies, and um, we, we kind of um, share 50-50. They bring some money, and we bring. Then, um, since we have what it takes to, the, to, to give out these loans, work with them, arrange it properly, and uh, get the farmers to uh, find a way to um, repay the process. So um, we also have what we call the on-lending, on-lending strategy. In on-lending, I want to use this opportunity to invite you know, wealthy Nigerians, wonderful people. I mean, it's been um, said by the Minister of Agriculture sometime that everybody, everybody as we speak, should go into farming. You might have the money, you work with Bank of Agriculture, we all lend to the farmers. Since we have the structure, you might just say in a community, in a community you have a lot of people that want to go into farming, you are there, you have you are the big guy, you have the money in town, then you work with us, we will put the structure, proper structure in place to further on lend to um, the farmers. But let me also use this opportunity to commend the state governors. Almost all the state governors have done so very well, truly. From the east, south, west, almost all of them, these are all working towards food security. From Abia State, for example, the executive governor of Abia State, um, Okeze Ikbazo, PhD, you know, is working with the farmers, you know, Abia, palm produce, a lot can be done there. Cassava, they are putting the farmers, getting them into cooperative societies and calling on um, Bank of Agriculture to work with them. In Imo State, Chief Richard Sokorota has also done so well with regards to you know, supporting the farmers. He keyed in to the program of Ankoborowa's program of the Central Bank that's working with the Bank of Agriculture. Lock of Abel in State, Rice, Chief David Dumai has done so, so very well working with the state farmers and especially the peasant farmers. Just how many days ago, um, my MD, uh, Alaji Kabel Mohamed Adamu, you know, fellow of the Nigerian Institute of uh, Management, led I and um, um, uh, one of the executive directors, uh, David Ame, I mean, um, Emmanuel Ame, in charge of uh, retail banking, we went to Bono State. I could not believe it. We stayed in Bonu State last Wednesday up to Friday. Up to Friday. I could not believe it. The state governor, Laji Shetima, took us round, straight into the farm, where we launched the Anchor Borowas program of uh, Central Bank. He gathered the state, and again, the commissioner, Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture, told us, and we saw it, I personally saw it, that they spent over 30 billion naira in acquiring um, agri equipment, harvesters and all that. Name them, almost all the states. Acquire bomb state is not only farming, fishing, Dr. Ema uh, Emmanuel uh, Udon, all that. Th th what I'm trying to bring out is that our states, based through the state governors, you can further reach okay. the grassroots. All right. At this point in time, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be listening to the opinions of Nigerians, the ordinary folks, the ordinary citizens, on the impact of climate change and food security. That's when we return after this short break. Nigerians, our fearless officers and men of the Nigerian military are winning the war against Boko Haram. Today, 
all occupied territories have been recovered and Boko Haram has been degraded. Our affected brothers and sisters are getting their lives back. However, they are now after you and me. In our mosques, churches, schools, motor parks, markets, entertainment centers, and public gatherings. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. Nigeria Unite Against Terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Minister of Information and Culture. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us. Working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA, growing with the nation. Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel. Let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values, which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, good people, great nation. Make you report any crooked person, object, or work at movement to police and security agent demo. The security of our nation now work for all of us, so plus including me and you. Nigeria, make we unite against terrorism. The Federal Minister of Information and Culture bring on this message. <laughs> Issue-Oriented Innovation Talk Show. Thanks for staying with us. What are the citizens saying regarding the impact of climate change on food security? We took our cameras out. Let's get to see this report. nation is mobilizing everybody, every nation, that there's a threat to human race. Climate change is affecting human race. You know, if we should follow the, all the necessary rules and regulation and the policy put in place, I believe there's going to be a better place for us to stay living. Yes, the nation might one day wipe off everybody away, maybe in the coastal area in Nigeria. For people that don't know what climate change is, it will be difficult to convince them that climate change is responsible for the floods, especially the flash floods we had um, just last week. And the fact that when those floods occur, it washes away also our, our lands for farming. So I think the basic problem here is to, is to educate Nigerians on what climate change is. There's research funds that are in the banks is access. How do they access this one? You know, most times you have um, a lot of requirements that these farmers, these poor farmers cannot meet up to sincerely because they are, they are, they are, they are not large-scale farmers. They are basically small subsistence farmers. Our full security, I think government is doing a lot about that. I think that we hear the Honorable Minister of Agri talking about some um, storages, designing the rice, and kebi, and some other foodstuffs. So if we can continue on that, I think we could have that. Yes, great. Well, the authorities in charge of food and every other things in Nigeria, or well, agricultural-wise, like uh, FAO or something like that, they are aware 
of impending floods that could be coming up that could probably wash away one thing or another. So they've done a lot to curb it. The voice of the people. Are we living in denial? Do you think there are many people who are still in denial? The effects of climate change? Uh, earlier on, I would say about uh, 10 years ago, there were a lot more people on denial than they are now because the effects have been very obvious. I mean, you take a look at all the floods that have happened in this country this year, and uh, 2012, it was much worse. But just focusing on agriculture, um, a lot of uh, farmlands have been flooded out, even in northern Nigeria. I'm not even talking about the south, south, southeast, and southwest, where this is uh, very normal because of relief and the fact that they get more in annual rainfall than the rest of the places. But it's now a very big national problem. And it's not just uh, rainfall floods. There are many other threats. As I said, dislocation of pests to zones that were never susceptible to those before. Nigeria has had to deal with the, the, the issue of uh, pests in recent times, just a, a, a few months ago. What's uh, <laughs> And these were areas that uh, were not traditionally prone to uh, the infestation of these pests. Because uh, climate change changes the temperature profiles, changes the rainfall patterns, and changes a whole lot of other things, even relative humidity and the ecology of those places. So the pests migrate to other areas that they are not expected to be at. So how do you deal with that? Well, there are many. Many ways of dealing with this. Uh, first of all, Nigeria signed on to the Desert Wall Project, for example. And not much has been done there. And I think that the federal government should go back to implementing that uh, project in collaboration with West African neighbors. Uh, we are talking about rainfall now. But if you go to Yobe, a lot of uh, uh, sun is settling on farmlands and rendering them unproductive. So in addition to improving seeds, the resistance of seeds and storage facilities and so forth, something has to be done about the terrain itself. So that's one in the north. In a lot of those places that are also bread baskets, uh, they are threatened now by the migration of the desert as a result of climate change. So the desert wall project needs to be implemented and implemented fast. In eastern Nigeria, uh, that is so susceptible to erosion because they have dispersive soils. Erosion is also eroding soil nutrients. So they got to do something. And what do they do there? They should have agricultural land conservation policies that you don't build everywhere. You don't leave the land fallow for erosion to really uh, ravage. Southwestern Nigeria is the ecological vein of Nigeria. They should do the same too. I see all kinds of trees cut all the way from Ogun State to Lagos. So there are things like that that can be done at the policy and practical levels. Also in addition, I just like to say that government using the green alternative policy is implementing the efficient nitrogen fertilizer soil testing and you, uh, by using the recommended, uh, recommended dosage. We are also substituting manure for inorganic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Government is promoting crop livestock production system. Government is also promoting the use of ammonium sulfate supplement to promote soil microbial activities and reduce methanogen. Government is using urea deplacement Government is also promoting the use of manual treatment. Okay. In addition, government is improving animal husbandry. We are also currently strengthening the extension system in order to ensure that we change the knowledge, the attitude, the skill, the behavior of the farmers by making sure that we are reaching farmers in all the nooks and crannies of the country okay. to right. inform them on how to address the climate change. Right. I think but in addition, okay. still, uh, uh, in the area of seed, yes. there are climate smart 
varieties of seeds seed. that are actually available now. Government is doing actually a lot in order to ensure that these are available, particularly in the area of uh, uh, drought tolerant varieties, like the maize variety cost as much 40, 40 that was released in 2013, mm -hmm. and a lot are actually being released. Okay. I want to put on record that uh, the variety release committee is actually doing a lot. Particularly, we are talking of flooding today. There are flood tolerant rice varieties that are available. Value 66 and 67 were released just about a month ago right. in the last uh, variety release committee. Okay. Also, for early maturing uh, materials, particularly for maize, a lot actually there. And medical uh, 53, uh, 58, and 59 are short duration uh, rice varieties that are available, which actually uh, are around today. Okay, we, we'll return to those um, those varieties you talked about, the flood resistant, for, for instance. There are questions we'd like to raise on it. But let's first take this call from <coughs> Augustine, who's calling in from Ugori. Augustine from Ugori, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yes, my name is Chief Augustine C.B. from Wari. Yes, I come from Delta State, and uh, I enjoy your program. Um, a lot has been talked about crop farming, fish, uh, cash crop, and uh, uh, other areas of uh, exploration. But you see, fishing has not been sufficiently addressed there. We come from the riverine area, and because of climate change, you can as well know that uh, fishing activities have been so affected. The deep sea fishing, high sea, uh, high sea fishing, and uh, sometimes the forest fishing. These are areas where the German, the Roboman, the Shekriman, and those of the Niger Delta uh, have uh, a lot of uh, activities, activities to do, and uh, performance has been very, very low because of uh, climate change associated with oil exploration that has polluted the area, we suffer so much. How do we do so that these areas can be improved? And you can as well, Peter, that you talk of fertilizer. Fertilizer is open to a lot of farmers. But what do you do? to encourage fishermen and women who are not open to a lot of such facilities. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Augustine. Yes, fishing. What would the Ijo, the Yoruba man do? <laughs> you know, he's not looking at the land now. He's talking about how this is affecting, you know, uh, the riverine areas and uh, fishing. Yeah, thank you very much, Augustine. It's because of the time factor. I actually uh, would have loved earlier to mention what the Ministry of Agriculture is doing to support the jaws and the riverine. On fishing, currently we are promoting the low energy fuel efficient fishing through the use of passive fishing gear such as gill net, pots, hooks, and line and trap that can reduce the requirement for fossil fuel. We are also supporting the farmers through under the growth enhancement program through the provision of fingerlings. So these are what we are doing to support the fishermen. Well, you just, you just mentioned this, and it, it just seemed to me a moment ago that uh, what you just talked about, I wouldn't even know a thing about that, and I'm wondering if a fisherman on his dugout somewhere in the creeks is sufficiently aware what you're talking about? Yeah, under the South South program, because we are having some projects that are specifically targeted towards the Niger, I mean Niger Delta. For example, we have the community based agriculture and rural development programs, which have been supported by International Fund for Agricultural Development. It is specifically addressing the Niger Delta areas, and we are reaching the rural people, the young graduates who are currently only pawns and they are making money from fishing. So we're supporting them. Also, currently we have in our national data uh, on farmer, 
not less than 15 million, over 15 million farmers. And substantial numbers of these farmers from the Niger Delta area, from Lagos, are uh, embarking on fish farm. And we are supporting them with appropriate inputs once they are registered and they are, comp they are captured under the national farmers. Standard. So I want to assure you that they are aware and they are being reached. Okay. And to the be able to do this, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture has decentralized most of its staff to the state. Okay. We, we'll, be coming to, we'll be coming to the president of the Farmers Association in a moment or so, but let's try and get this call from Ubun State. Hello. Hello. Hello, are you with us? Yeah. I'm still on. Yes, go right ahead. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello, go ahead. Good evening. This is Mrs. Shorongwe speaking from Shagamu. Hmm. Hello, I'm with you. This is Mrs. Shorongwe from Shagamu. I'm a fish. Hello. Good evening. I'm a fish farming woman from Shagamu. And uh, I want to discuss on two issues that is probably not in Shagamu here. Hmm. We have flooding problem. Flooding. 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 Yes, we have go ahead. flooding problem in Shagamu. And uh, we need support of. Let's go ahead. <coughs> problem in Shagamu and uh, we have an assist we need an assistance in financial financial assistance from the government. How we can go about this successfully is what I'm seeking for. Thank you very much. Right. Well I don't think well, she says um, <laughs> they've got the challenge of flooding in uh, Shagam and uh, would need support. Now, Perhaps what we might even look at beyond just that is uh, we tie that up with uh, the question of fish farming and say, yes, climate change also has an impact on that. So is there any provision for support coming from the Bank of Agriculture for fish farmers, especially those who face challenges of flooding and other, you know, matters? Well, um, support definitely will always come. But first, let me also talk a little on um, this climate change. Because, I mean, there are certain things we need to put proper perspective. Climate change is also known um, as uh, global warming. Mm. Yeah, this is a, 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 it's a, it's a global problem. It has to do with earth temperature increasing rapidly and uh, other climatic factors being altered like wind rain and all that man as a human being has contributed you know to this occurrence through the burning of hydro which include petrol mm. kerosene coal through this um, uh, process you know it leads to green house grazes like um, carbohydrate, um, sorry, carbon dioxide. Yes, carbon dioxide and uh, carbon uh, monoxide. These are produced and which lead to environmental uh, pollution. The resultant effect is that there is a change in the climate. And this has to do to stab it stabilizes, destabilizes farmers. When we talk of farmers, we are not only talking of farmers right on the land. Mm -hmm. Like she rightly pointed out, farmers, you know, uh, uh, farming, fish farming is also part of it. I want to say it here and now that um, the provision of support definitely will go to or every form of agricultural production, you know, fish farming and all that. So we we will definitely, you know, go ahead to continue to you know to support. 
Let me try to help our sister by saying that we've always been saying it since the last flood we recorded in Nigeria that fish farmers, crop farmers, livestock farmers should try and ensure their farms. We have the NAIC. We should also try and take the opportunity of Nigeria incentive-based agricultural risk uh, lending system, which is known as NISA. Against this backdrop, I want to advise Mrs. Shogunle to take advantage of the small and medium enterprise development funds of the central bank. They should form themselves into groups. They can assess this fund at a single digit Great. But when you are taking these facilities, always make sure you ensure your farm. Either with NAIC, and this is why under the Green Alternative, the weather index insurance is one of the priorities as a way of addressing the climate change because it will continue to come. And so you need to insure your farm. Right, but some of, the, some of those factors that are causing uh, uh, challenges for uh, different parts of the... May of course, be the activities of uh, yes. man himself, yes. like the South South, for instance, mm -hmm. where oil spillages mm -hmm. and uh, you know prospecting for oil has done a lot of damage to the ecosystem. Now, you do have farmers there in those places as well. How do they begin to get out of this problem? As to increase, because if you're talking about increasing yield, it cuts across. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news for quite some places in Nigeria. Uh, the Niger Delta problem, uh, the oil problem, and the physiography of the Niger Delta is what we've studied for more than 25 years. Um, a one meter rise. In, which is unlikely. You need to talk about 25% uh, uh, of that rise in sea level <coughs> will inundate about two-thirds of the Niger Delta. So in a sense, some of those problems cannot be addressed by patching here and there. People are going to have to move out of some parts of the Niger Delta. This is what people don't want to hear. Some of the areas that are polluted in the Niger Delta that we've done reconnaissance for more than 10 years now can never be cleaned up. And I say that with all honesty. People are just going to have to move. Moving because of environmental degradation is nothing new. All right. People moved away from Chernobyl. People moved away in history many times, in Southeast Asia, even now, in the United States. So uh, it is kind of uh, uh, improper to think that some of those areas will ever be cleaned up because of the nature of the problem. Okay. Yes. But, all right. Let's quickly take this call from Kogi State, and then we'll return to this issue because uh, it's all part of um, uh, ensuring food security. <laughs> yes, hello. Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Alapa, Alapa One, not Alaba, sorry. Alapa One from Kogi State. Okay. Yeah, I quite uh, appreciate the effort of the government, this present administration concerning agriculture, hmm. especially the Honorable Minister of Agri and Rural Development, Chief Outward Bear. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's trying, and I, I pray he continue with that, hmm. with the recent uh, exportation of yam. Like we know, we have foods in Nigeria. Especially, well, the program we have is preservation. Like I come from a very agri agrarian area, Ibaji particularly, where we, we based in farming. But the problem is that at the time when our food stores are out, our crops are out for harvest, for harvest. we don't have roots, no, there's no root, and there's no way we can take them out. Because of that, the price is drop. And we, at the end of the day, it, we just, just got spoiled. But I have a question before I run out of time, sir. Um, especially to the president of All Farmers Association and Mr. Moe Huawei from the Federal Minister of Agri. There was a time, sometime this year, about the last month precisely, I went to Lagos. I decided to go to Iduroku, particularly in the Jose Iduroku border. So I went to buy oil, to produce palm oil there to go and sell. 
some are coming. There is a, there, 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 there was a checkpoint uh, the who are extorting money on uh, from people carrying agricultural products. They call themselves National Association of Agricultural Product Dealers. They say NAPI that they are working in collaboration with the with the Federal Minister of Agri. Then I ask them why are they extorting money even from things that are produced within Nigeria? They say that they remit to the federal government that the federal government gives fertilizers that this is our own way of uh, of paying back. I said, okay, what of the tax we pay? They say no. That uh, then I said, okay, they should go and meet their members. They now say that everybody, every every farmer is a member. So I want to use this medium to ask if the federal minister of agri because of this problem particularly yesterday particularly I tried to reach the the the, the P to the honourable minister of agri I called I called he did not pick me because he was busy or not familiar with my number <coughs> I don't know to inquire if actually the federal minister of agri is aware of these people extorting money we are aware that they are trying to dismantle root blocks accepting money from agricultural products and agro allied products in Nigeria on highway. But these people are not bold enough to come to the road to now uh, to start extorting uh, the same money from people. We don't know where this money is going to. That is the question I want to be clarified, sir. Thank you so much. And I want to equally use the media once again that I appreciate the present government on what they are doing on agriculture, especially the Honorable Minister of, of Agri. Let him continue. So we we'll have a lot to, 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 to thank God and celebrate at the end of the day. God bless you all. And the current professor from China and all of you there, I quite appreciate your your contribution and the enlightenment. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, straight, straightforward question he raised: Is the Federal Ministry of Agriculture in concert, or does the Federal Ministry of Agriculture know about these individuals who are on the roads who say they are collecting uh, certain taxes? <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. In fact, during uh, the recent uh, discussion at the Federal Executive Council, whereby a decision was taken to find out the what to find out what must have been responsible for the increase in the price or prices of food items. One of the issues dealt with is the issues of multiple taxations. I want to say that government is not aware of these people. If you look at uh, uh, those who are collecting the taxes, they are from different local governments. And this is why government is working on the use of train to okay. move most of the agricultural produce from one location to another. We started working on that from Kaduna to different parts of the okay. countries. In fact, it was discovered that the major factors, one of the major factors that was responsible for the increase in the price of food items is the cost mm -hmm. of transport as well as the most multiple taxation. Government is not aware of Well, like you said, they, they make claims that they're working with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. <laughs> no. So would the ministry go all out and categorically put statements out and drive the process of getting rid of those people on the road? Because yeah. this is what government, is affecting... Like, like, like I said, government is working on this. But in fact, this is one of the decisions reached. If you are following the decision of the uh, Federal Agency Council on uh, the increase in the uh, price of food items, I want to assure you that government, we go after them and government will find a way of letting the public know that they are not working for the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. All right. They are neither the agency of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, but they are working for their, they are working either for themselves or for local, for their local government. Farmer's President, he did say you had to come in here as well. <laughs> Well, uh, as far as um, multiple taxation is concerned, uh, it had uh, generated a lot of, you know, discussion. Uh, I will give you the example of uh, the grains that are taken from the north to the south. And some of it is used for the energy component of our feed for chicken and things like that. You would go to Saminaka and buy 
maybe a ton at uh, 40,000. But the landing cost in uh, Ibadan would be like 55,000. And most of the people will attribute it to the tax, illegal taxes they pay on the road. And uh, we made presentations that these things should not happen. But we realized that a lot of the local governments in some of those states that we cross are illegally instructing those things because the, what, these commodities are passing through their territory, territory. therefore they tax. We don't, what we don't know is whether these people actually take the monies collected to the, the, local. the local governments. So uh, he has said it here on national TV. I, I think that that should go to tell people that these, this activity is illegal and therefore do not, you, because it, uh, I would punish even the person who, who gives this money. You know, you, you, the man will say, give me, but you are not duty bound to give. You protest and you generate a lot of controversy and then you run these people out. Okay. You know, this is uh, putting it mildly, but government can really come out uh, to get rid of all these people. Just like the police sometimes will say, no more roadblocks. I believe the Federal Ministry of Agriculture can come out to say this. We will definitely do that. Yes. And we are, and like Siri said, we are going to make a public pronouncement okay. that these rent seekers are not from the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> well, returning to the uh, peculiar challenges of um, fish farmers, who also form part of uh, the whole group of people who are supposed to uh, uh, boost food security. What has the association uh, done about there? Well, yes. look, uh, we, we've been talking about uh, seed here. We have restricted it to crops. Mm. But we also have fingerlings that have to be monitored. You have to give the farmers the right kind of seed in that sense. Chicken, even the, the, the large rumens. Mm -hmm. we, we have pockets of research institutes who specialize in some of these areas. And they recommend that you use this species for this area. And again, you know, I would like to talk about the flood effect and all that. Mm -hmm. The government can do this. Sometimes, you know, the farmer, because he does not have much resources, he thinks that insurance is a waste of money. But when he borrows, it's a precondition for borrowing. But when, like uh, Madame said Shubo, in Chagam, yeah. she's just experienced this now, and she is uh, in trouble. Just like some of the people in the Niger Delta are in trouble today, yeah. government can do something they can compensate yes. people for these uh, events one off after that you will now caution them but before you do this make sure that you ensure sure mm -hmm. that that would ameliorate the problems mm -hmm. yes. because uh, you know it has happened before even poultry farmers yes. in that region when there was flood the whole uh, you Birds. know the, 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 their pens chicken pens the chicken were just floating and of course they ended up dying in, in the floods and those people have we have so many reports so many complaints and you have set so many committees and I believe up to now some people have not been paid and this has happened about six years ago so, so I believe this government in the effort in the green alternative effort it should entrench the possibility of giving compensation to people who suffer these kinds of uh, things due to climate change, yes. due to the actions of yes. commission yes. from us. Okay. Okay. And I yes. may add that this happens in other countries. <laughs> so it's not unusual. Yeah. And also, I would also want to add that uh, the president of Farmers Association of Nigeria should help us mobilize the farm on the importance of insurance for their farms. We, are all, we all, all want to agree that even some of us who are educated may not realize the importance of insurance. So we need a lot of let, mobilization. Let me come in, you know, in, in one of our advocacies, uh, in fact, the very first thing that we did when we took over, we, we visited NAEC and interfaced with them and uh, told them that we are amenable to insurance. But what happens in reality is 
the insurance does not really compensate the losses. Exactly. I have a personal experience. I, I had uh, some insurance, I paid everything, and uh, I lost 30 million. But I got only six hundred and thirty-six million. I mean, thousand. Right. So this, I, I this is the thing. It's not the, the question of insurance, and uh, you might not really blame the farmers who are new to the question of insurance. Insurance has been a controversial subject all along in all other aspects, and uh, many Nigerians will tell you that. Um, they Go cannot to, trust yeah. insurance <laughs> companies. Yes, yes, yes. And now we are bringing this into agriculture. So <laughs> would you say that is understandable? Because generally insurance has not been a very uh, yes. <laughs> a palatable subject for many people. But we have to do it. <laughs> because <laughs> anywhere there is, where, where there is risk, you must find a way of mitigating against the risk. And and that is tied to the loans they eventually get, the credit they eventually get from uh, Dr. Okewa. Yeah, it's a precondition. <laughs> it's always a precondition. It's a precondition before you take the loan. <laughs> okay, so now developing um, varieties, like he said, we've concentrated on uh, plants, uh, you know, crop seeds for crops. Who is doing what in the area of fish farming, for instance. I still go back to fish farming. Yeah, let me say that we have some research institutes that have the mandate to work on the appropriate uh, uh, seed. We call, that, we call it seed too, mm -hmm. for fish farming. We're working towards this. For example, uh, there's a cross base between uh, uh, some variety and some species of uh, uh, fish now that we now have improved uh, 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 materials. So Federal Ministry of Agriculture is working on this and I want to say that uh, the federal government is appropriately funding the research institutes now in order to ensure that they address their specific uh, mandates. We have the research institute in uh, Chica, I mean, in um, the Animal Research Institute, very close to, I think the place is called Chica too. Yes, Napri. Uh, yeah. That has just developed a Chica, uh, Chica brand uh, species of uh, uh, chicken, which is. It's not just. Uh, it's, uh, it's a, a very, proper very five year old. Very, very old. In so, fact, what I'm saying. The former man in RCM. Is, uh, professor. Yes, yeah, he's the one who. So, what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is that. Uh, we are addressing all these issues, mm -hmm. be it fish, be it animal, be it crops, in order to address the challenge of uh, climate change. Right, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. See, uh, I think at this juncture, it's actually uh, necessary for me uh, to let us know uh, the area of actual sea we are actually looking at. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in a number of occasions, people have accosted me and say, what are you doing about fingerlings? Mm -hmm. What are you doing about some other uh, seeds that are now actual seeds? Mm -hmm. uh, I think at the juncture, I want to tell Nigerians what the actual seed that we are regulating, you know, the, the definition as per the National Actual Seed Act, right. 72 or 1992. Say, actual seeds include cereals, legumes, oil seeds, grass, fiber, root, and tuber of any other crop, seed and seed, commonly recognized within Nigeria as agricultural seed. Long seed, vegetable seed, forestry and seedlings, conventional horticultural seed, seedlings, ornamental seed mixtures, mm -hmm. and all planting materials as the minister may designate from time to time. So that the issue of fingerlings does not come, does not come they under <laughs> the auspices of the National Agricultural Council. Thank you right. very much. And let me also, yes. Let me actually use this opportunity to um, tell farmers, Nigerian farmers, that as a team, the new team has been mentioned here, we are very, very determined to do the needful at this particular point in time. The federal government through the 
Minister of um, Agriculture and Rural Development, our supervisory ministry, are doing quite a lot to ensure that we meet up our mandate to give loan for agricultural production in the entire value chain. We've been able to meet with the acting president and um, he told us quite a lot, supported us and um, encouraged us. That was a very, very wonderful meeting you know, in support of agriculture. <coughs> and um, to say it as it is, we also met with the Honorable Minister of Finance, a wonderful lady that is really, really pursuing this alternative to oil. At this point in time, I will also say that we are working very closely with the Central Bank of Nigeria and um, to ensure that we meet up with the needed things we we'll do to support the farmers in all these interventions. Right. As, uh, as we begin to wind down, let's go back quickly to an issue that uh, Professor Yang raised. And he said there might be need for some communities or some people to move from areas. Like and it brings me to the question of uh, farmers whose uh, land has been flooded and uh, they're not really agreeable to moving away from those prone areas. And uh, you hear things about uh, an ancestral commitments, you hear all sorts of things, and farmers don't really move them. When there have been attempts to move them, they come back. Uh, oftentimes, uh, resettlements are not due to these kinds of disasters that he's talking about. This what is happening there is even inimical to life. If there is a flood, you know, that is occasioned by a certain event and it's one off, you can now come back. But if there is a pollution in the system yes. that would that can affect you forever, you you are you jolly well have to move. So the, the kind of resettlement that he's talking about, I've had, uh, I, I, I think it was very clear in Nigeria that uh, when uh, some people were putting some waste, yes. toxic waste, uh, cocoa. there was one man, cocoa. Cocoa waste. There, there was one man who said that he was not going to move, uh -huh. his yes. property was there and he even came out, he was mm -hmm. even on TV and all that, but ultimately I think the, di the man died of cancer yes. because of the pollution. So. Uh, you need to do a lot of advocacy and uh, tell people also the demerits of even operating from where they think they have some ancestral attachment to and give them alternatives that are very viable and then they move. That is incentivize them. And that is what we should do to the Niger Delta, yeah. especially those areas. Yeah. The, the kind of money that we are putting through N N NDDC and all that, you know, is enough to help in this resettlement. Right. Dr. Urusha Gujo has uh, read out the classification of his uh, seeds. Yeah. Right. So we turn to you and say, who takes care of those that are not captured? Yeah, I want that? to say that the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development is taking care of that. We have a full-fledged Department of Fishery and any information on fingerlings, any information on the rice stock of fish can be obtained from the Federal Department of Fisheries. We are equal to the task. And I want to also say that uh, this act is currently being overhauled because in, in line with the best practice all over the world, seed is seed, whether it's the seed of livestock, whether it's the seed of animals, but currently there is no vacuum. Okay. And when there are challenges occasioned by climate change, they still run to the umbrella of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. They still on the Federal yeah. Department of Fish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, gentlemen, 
Um, we have just a few minutes to go on this program, and um, we would uh, be winding down with taking direct strategies that will turn the situation around. You have said we're working towards that. Yeah, and yes. direct strategy. We are having the National Agricultural Resilience Framework, mm -hmm. which is strengthening the overall policy institutions framework, su supporting sustainable intensification in agriculture, target funding aimed at reducing degradation, reinforcing the, uh, the existing social safety net, mainstreaming climate smart agricultural policy, adapting the methodological and ideological and ocean 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 oceanographic data, developing innovative adaptation program, developing improved range management, and evaluating and introducing risk transfer and risk management strategy. All these are contained in the already developed National Agricultural Resilience Framework developed for Nigeria. This National Agricultural Resilience Framework has been taken as the best so far in Africa and is being copied by the other African countries. I want to say that the Honorable Minister, in his belief to ensure policy consistency, is committed to the implementation of this. Thank Dr. Ojo. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, National Agricultural Council, under the auspices of our Honorable Minister, Ifaudu Ogwe, is actually supporting us, particularly in ensuring that there's availability of early generation seeds because there has been a gap. Mm -hmm. And he's doing a lot. We had a stakeholders workshop, which was occasioned by the instruction given by the acting president. Papers were put together and the policy has been submitted, the proposal has been submitted for uh, funding. And government is actually doing a lot in ensuring that there's no gap, particularly in the area of early generation seed. The facilities of research institutes were actually captured under that uh, mandate, and a lot of things will be done in order to ensure that all this is done. Okay, well, Dr. Kimura. Well, the Bank of Agriculture is being re-engineered. Like I said before, we are restructuring. Um, I always like to quote Chief K. Umbadiwe of the Blessed Memo, who said that greatness must be financed. Yes, as a country, we are going to definitely do a lot in agriculture. And through agriculture, we will be greater than what we are today. So we are planning to make the Bank of Agriculture the Farmer's Bank. All right. And also learning from the experience of the Bank of, uh, Agri Bank of China that has over 800 million clients. We are targeting 50 million mm -hmm. Clients. Well, uh, Professor Yang, briefly. Yeah. With respect to the uh, effects of climate change on food security in Nigeria, a lot has been done in the past five years. I can verify that. I've seen the plans. And I've seen some actions. But there are some agencies that need to complement the activities of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture uh, with other th examples of those are the Ministry of uh, Federal Ministry of Environment that needs to produce a biennial state of the environment report of Nigeria so okay. that farmers and so okay. forth could know where the risks are. Okay. There are some specific projects that need to be continued or implemented now. First among them is that desert wall project. Desert wall project that has been there on the cards for so long but not implemented. Okay. Then there should be zonation maps of Nigeria and then the Niger Delta cleanup program that some areas should be selectively cleaned up and not all areas as we've right. discussed. Okay, so for you, the president of the Farmers Association, um, we are your, here your today last word. because we are yearning for food security. Right. And we are faced with the danger of climate change preventing this to happen. Mm -hmm. But there are other issues that we must address okay. to be able to come up with the best way to provide food security for Nigeria. Uh. Chief among which is the implementation of all the laudable policies that are entrenched in the green alternative, for instance, which I, I was there and the, I eulogized it okay. and all that. All right. What we must do is we must have the farmers at all times 
this one. close by to listen to what is going on, not to hear it on TV. Let us be engaged so that we will be able to tell the others. Mm -hmm. And then they will imbibe the culture that is there, that is taking place in Nigeria, to take us okay. to the promised land. All right, and it is on that note, we'll say thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. And uh, this is where we round off. Next week, we'll reach you again on NTA Tuesday Live. I'm Cyril Stober. Bye for now.